All right, so uh, welcome back to Jim Bob's Garden. So today we're not doing gardening, we're doing some repairs. Now everybody has some type of a uh, water distribution system. I have a sprinkler set up. Basically what I have is these are my sprinkler valves. All right, now these valves supply water to three different zones uh, throughout the yard and the garden. All right, now this is three of six. I've got actually six different zones that provide water and a sprinkler action that goes on a timer. What had happened, this is the valve. Now what, the way these valves work is that it sits on top of here and it's electrified. So the water pressure closes this valve and then once you put electricity to it, it opens up the valve and allows water to flow from the supply side out and then that goes all the way out to the actual sprinklers themselves. Well, I came out here when I got back and my sprinklers had been running for like, I don't know how long. We got back from a vacation, they were still running. So, probably used a lot of extra water. But what had happened, this has started to crack because this is about 20 years old. And so I was getting water spraying out all around this valve and I went to go try and tighten it up a little bit and it just snapped right off. Because the plastic has just rotted out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this valve. You can see this one looks different. I've already replaced this one. All right, and I'm gonna do a similar thing with this. So let me explain to you. All right, so let me explain to you then how this system works. We'll start off with the uh, timer in the garage. Okay, so inside the garage, we have a sprinkler control system. And you'll see it's got electrical power being supplied by an outlet. And then this is where you set up your times that you want to water, how long you want it to water, and so on. And there's a million different types of, um, of sprinkler systems. But essentially what it does is it gets power in here, and then it sends power out through each one of these colored wires to those uh, sprinkler valves that I had showed you. All right. Now it just opens the valves, but the water pressure itself is supplied by a supply pipe. Let me go show you that. All right, so up front, you'll have basically a water pipe that comes up out of the ground and it'll have a shutoff of some sort. And this shutoff, like I've got it in the shutoff position right now, shuts the water off to the, the sprinkler system or I can turn it back on. Now you can see on here, the previous owner had had valves where you could run smaller sprinkler systems out of these valves apparently. I've never messed with these, never really tried it. And then it also had a second shutoff here. So I guess the, so you could shut this off and allow water to just go to these valves. All right. Obviously I need to do some work, put some new um, insulation on there. But that's how this works. So right now, there's two things. I have the sprinkler system in the off position, so I'm only getting electricity, and I have the water turned off so that I don't get any uh, water spraying me in the face when I open this up. All right, so let's go back to doing the repair. Okay, before you do any digging of any sort in your yard, you're required by law here in uh, Duval County, Florida at least, to call 811 and verify where your underground wires, um, whether it be electrical, because like here we don't have, um, you know, overhead wires. You can see there are no overhead wires here it's because everything runs underground. And if I was to dig a hole right here, there's a good potential that I could hit an electrical wire and electric electrocute myself and possibly put the whole uh, subdivision out of power. Same thing, phone wires, cable wires, underground water. Like I have my main water coming in over here. And if I was to hit that with a shovel, real good and hard, particularly if you're using like heavy equipment, um, you know, like a backhoe or something, if you were to pop that, all that water is just going to come gushing out. And there's no way right here to shut off the water coming in. I can shut off. I can shut it off once it gets to the spigot. But prior to the spigot, it's just going to keep running until I get somebody out here. So always, always, always know where your water lines are, know where your electrical wires are, know where everything is in your yard before you start digging. All right, so now once you've got the power shut off because you don't want to get electrocuted and you got the water shut off because you don't want to get soaked, um, I went ahead and I've already previously dug this out. Now I want to show you some important stuff. Okay, first off, you got your wiring, which you're going to have to rewire all this. So I've left the valve connected so that when I go to rewire it, I know what goes to where. All right. So also you'll notice that I've, I, I planted my mulberry bushes here right next to the valves not really a good idea but there's a purpose behind the madness so i ended up with a lot of roots in here as you can see which is kind of interesting because 
it shows you that most of the roots from a mulberry go deep. Which is kind of cool. So I'm going to cut some of these out. The ones that are going to be in the way. Primarily. Alright. So now I know that the one that's broke is this one. Here. That's my number two. Or is it number No, it's number three, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down here, and I'm going to put a, a um, adapter in between to rejoin it once I take it off. And this hopefully will screw up. I don't want to do that up here. One, I don't have a lot of space. And two, this is the pressure side. So I don't want this side to leak. If I have a leak, I'd prefer it be back over here where it's only going to leak while I got pressure onto the actual sprinkle heads themselves. Also, you'll notice that I dug this trench long here so that I have some flex because I'm going to need that to be able to get the adapters and everything hooked back up. If you don't have any flex, then you're not going to be able to do it. Now, you're going to want to cut this with a saw. All right, now, if you have a sawzall, it's a great tool, but I have this saw which is a great little saw I've had for years and years or you can use one of these little uh, hack saws you want to try and cut it as straight as possible and you want some space all right so I'm gonna go down here right around there and I'm gonna cut it and it's just PVC so it should cut pretty simply and pretty easily you don't need to have power saws the other thing is you're gonna have some water so having a power saw may not be the best idea. You want to try and keep it straight. You can't really do it with a hacksaw because you don't have the space between here and here to really go at it with a hacksaw. As you can see, I've got some leakage coming out. And that's going to happen because the valve may be lower. I'm not going straight, but close enough. The valve is going to be lower than the, uh, some of your sprinkler heads. So you're going to get back flow from the sprinkler heads into this pipe. Now another little trick I used when I originally dug this out, uh, this is going to be hard to do, oh. when I originally dug this out, I dug out a big enough well that I could hose it down with a hose and the it would move the dirt basically into the hole that I dug. Alright, so now what we're gonna do and you'll notice like I said the water doesn't come from this end, it's actually come from this end, so it's draining out of the pipe and the sprinkler heads. So now the plan is to be able to hopefully turn this sucker and twist it out. Now for that, a good pair of pliers helps. So you see I'm turning this whole thing And then screwing it off of here. So basically, this is a screw in connection. And you see why I need the flex so that it has room to come out. So there's the old valve. Now what we're going to do is take the old valve off of this piece of pipe. And hopefully this won't be too hard. There 
voila, we are removed. So now I get rid of this and get my new valve. So now you notice this valve does not match that valve, but it's okay. All right, but there's a couple of important things that you need to know. All right, a couple of things you want to know. One, you're going to end up having to take this valve off because more than likely, yeah, it's not going to spin on without it. So it just screws off like so. Set that aside. All right. The other thing is you really don't want to get a lot of dirt into this uh, if, if at all possible. All right, so one of the things you want is some Teflon tape. And uh, Teflon tape, what it does is helps to ensure a good seal so you don't have a lot of leakage. Now it's not as important on the outlet side. Uh, keep in mind that this will only have pressure when the sprinkler system is on. Now, anytime you have a valve it's going to show you the direction of flow you can see on this one it shows the flow is going in that way so that means I want my supply side in here and my outlet side on here so let me just screw that back on make sure you can do it by hand so you're not cross threading it right. and we're just going to work in reverse of what we did before I'm going to snug that bad boy down Now, can you replace this fitting? I mean, you can if you want. Um, you can buy new fittings for it and a new piece of pipe. Um, should be fine. Should not be a major issue. Um, I would not worry about it myself. Uh, Come on now. Right, there we go. Nice and snug. Alright. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this onto the supply side. And once again, we want to put some Teflon tape on. And part of the goal of this is not to get any more dirt into the supply side in particular than absolutely necessary. Otherwise, what can happen is that you'll end up with that dirt inside the valve and it can cause leakage. It can cause the valve to go bad. Lots of little issues that can happen there. And a couple good wraps. That Teflon tape should be fine. Ah, man, really? Of course. It'll be a pain now. Oh yeah, and if you talk to things, inanimate objects while you work on them, it helps. this I'm gonna crank it onto there Now, as you can see, this valve is a bit longer, so now we have an overlap. Obviously, that ain't going together. So, what we got to do is then cut this off. All right. This is the 
lot easier to have power tools. But, you know, power tools and water, not such a good mix. And as you're doing this, keep in mind, let the saw do the work. It'll cut away the plastic just fine. You don't know, really try and struggle with it or really trying to work it hard. You're just going to spend extra effort for nothing. Alright. Now this is going to be the fun part. Now that I can get this on. That stops it from coming back. Should have done. I was afraid of this. All right. So I'm gonna need a little more flex. Be able to shove that back. So we're gonna have to dig a little deeper. So, what I've done, dug a trench out there, yeah, so that I can shove this pipe back. Now, get the broom, pull it in here. There we go. All right, and that should do the trick. So now, hand don't crank that sucker down too tight you snap it all right so now what we got to do is figure out the wire now if you kept the old one wired then you're good to go because then you just replace the wires okay. and this is your main power here and you'll have a diagram it'll come in and it'll tell you how to wire it how to connect it and all that good stuff right. so we're going to see which wire goes where hopefully That one's in Spanish. It's a lot harder to understand. So actually it just says connect either one. So it doesn't really matter. But I am gonna use the stripe wire. Thank you. That almost fell in. All right, so an old solenoid. Right, so this is going to be 
cold wire. That one off. Take one of these wires. Actually, both stripes, so it didn't really matter. Alright, we're just going to wrap it around. That wire there. And then your connector just screws back on nice and snug. Put everything in place. wires all together, twist them up a little bit, and then put your connector back on. Now tug on each wire, make sure all of them are in there snug. Alright, so Cylinder is replaced. That's tight, that's tight. It should be on there, good to go. So let's go turn it on and see if it leaks. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got water pressure to it. No leaks on the supply side, so that's good to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test it. Now, all your valves should have a knob like this that allows you to turn the cylinder on and to allow water to flow. And we'll pump a bunch of air first. But if you look behind me, you'll see that I am pumping water in my sprinklers. All right, so we'll close that back down again. All right. Let the pressure die off of that. Now keep in mind you got a lot of air in your lines. Obviously because you just leaked a bunch of water out. Huh? Now we're going to go turn on the sprinkler system and see if that works. So we want to test the valve itself. So we'll be right back. Alright, so you can see it's working. Sprinklers are running like they should be. Got to sit on about five minutes to let it run, get all the air out, and make sure that it also shuts off. Um, but while that's working, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and cover it back up. And then we'll put this all to bed and we'll be done. Now, let me show you some of this. this uh, let me explain something. So, when I first moved into this house, this house was built in 1999. Alright, so when I moved here, I found the valves out front for the sprinkler system. But man, I could not find these three valves anywhere. And what had happened, they had a box like this. Let me show you the box. They had a box here, which is what you use to cover it. But they used a singular box. Well, you can see that this, when I set the other one on top of it, sits about that much higher. Okay, and that's why I've stacked up two of them. Because what had happened, this had actually been below ground and the dirt over the 20 years that it was, you know, uh, here, the dirt had actually migrated over the top of the box and I couldn't find it. So I had to follow the supply line 
I mean, digging holes in my yard all the way across to follow the supply pressure line all the way up to um, this uh, set of valves. And then I finally found it. So what I'm getting at is if you have a singular box like this one and you trip over it, no, I'm just kidding, don't trip over it. So if we set that down on top of those sprinkler heads, you can see that that is gonna sit well below the ground level. So you need to get something that is tall enough to keep that from happening, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that using that second box. All right, I'll clear this out just a little bit. So if I set this box down first, and once again, you can see how that sits well below the level that I want it to sit, all right? It almost got here, didn't it? All right, and then I'm gonna set this other box on top of it, and that brings me right up to right at ground level. All right, so when you do this, of course you wanna make sure that you've got access and that you're not riding up against, here, look down inside there, that you're not riding up against one of your valves. All right. So anyway, kind of set it like so. All right. So basically I can get my hand down in there and do whatever I need to do. So then we take and put the box on and fill it up with dirt. Now you don't want your box to move too much as you're doing this. So start a little bit around each side. Kind of keep it in place. Let's go along. All right, so then basically just hose it all down real good. So there you go, all fixed up, ready to rock. All right, uh, pretty simple process. Don't be afraid to do it yourself, it's not that hard. Um, I know I was a hydraulics one in the Navy, so I know how to work with hydraulics, which is basically all plumbing is. But basically any of you could do it. Uh, it's, it's just not that difficult. I'm a 58 year old smoking, coffee drinking, lazy bum, and I managed to do it, so. All in all, about what, what do you think we've been out here? About an hour, Brie? 45 minutes? Probably not even that. Maybe half an hour. Well, Plus a half an hour to dig it out. So you're talking hour, hour and a half tops yeah, is all it'll hour. take. Um, probably save me anywhere from 200 to 250 bucks to have a sprinkler guy come out here, cut it out, put a new one in, and button it all back up for me. So one, in, one of the best ways in the world to save yourself money is don't be afraid to take on certain projects by yourself. 
All right, so thanks once again for stopping by. Do me a favor and hit that like button. Um, it'll help me out a lot. Um, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And share it. Let everybody know. And if you got other things that you got to enter, I mean, questions about how to fix, um, I'm somewhat of a fix it man, though I'm not a, uh, uh, a licensed contractor or anything of that nature. But if you got any questions, let me know. Particularly stuff that's uh, around the garden. Like we actually took from here. The, the pipes that you saw when I was digging out that hole making it bigger, that's actually uh, water from here going out. So I got a spigot out there. And my neighbor, he put one in as well. And he also ran some electrical. So he's got a, an outlet out there. All right. So most of this stuff is common sense. Pretty easy to do. Uh, and most of it I can, I can do for myself so that I don't have to hire somebody else to do it. But anyway, once again, thanks for stopping by. Like, subscribe, and let me know what you think.